What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celia's Network, the channel dedicated to providing you with competitive Pokemon TCG content. We're going to look over the data from Philadelphia Regionals, the first major event for North America for this season. And I'm going to go over some of my predictions from previous to the tournament and then see how they panned out now that we have the data. So the first thing we're going to look at is this is a tweet that I sent out the night before the tournament. Just some predictions so I could look back at this and see if I was right, wrong, or somewhere in between. So I wrote cards that I am expecting to see increased play in Philly compared to Cups, Melbourne, and Santa Catarina, the tournaments leading up to it. Tapu Bulu GX, Delmise from Celestial Storm, Ms. Magius from Crimson Invasion, Sky Pillar, Aether Paradise, Bennett GX, Weakness Policy, Bodybuilding Dumbbells, and Field Blower. To speak on the cards that I was correct about, we did see Vika Bulu resurge as a an archetype outside of Vika Ray. Delmize was in both Vika Bulu and Vika Ray decks. Uh, Aether Paradise were in those Vika Bulu decks. We saw Bayonet GX take top four at the tournament. Weakness Policy was in that deck. Those kind of, those cards are going to be seen hand in hand a lot. I did not see a lot of bodybuilding dumbbells and fuel blower was still uh, much less played than it was last format but we did see a little bit more of it uh, in Caleb Gedimer's first place list uh, he played a single fuel blower um, I was wrong about Miss Magius sky pillar and bodybuilding dumbbells uh, but I think you know not too bad I did think that Bayonet GX was going to be much more played than it was but I think I overestimated uh, the general population of players' uh, meta calling skills. Uh, I think Bayonet GX was like obviously a really good card, uh, of course paired with weakness policy. But I think uh, I was thinking of you know players of my own caliber and above, knowing that Bayonet GX would be good. I thought it was kind of like an obvious thing, but apparently it wasn't. Let's not spend too much time on that though. So this was my chart of meta prediction from, oops, sorry about that. This was my chart that I made and published in my flipsidegaming.com article the week previous to Philly. Um, this was like kind of a rough estimate of what I thought the day one meta would kind of look like. Um, and I'll compare this to what it actually did look like because we have the wonderful RK9 Labs data handy. Also want to just say all the data was collected by RK9Labs.com and further collected, analyzed, or what have you by LimitlessTCG.com and uh, PTCGStats.com. Some of the placings and deck lists and some further information I got. We're from Pokestats and Limitless, but RK9 Labs is the uh, site, I guess you would say, that got all the data because they run the deck list program that people hand it in, uh, hand in their deck list through. So I just wanted to give them a shout out and thanks for providing us with this data. So this is what I thought it was going to look like. Beak of Ray, Buzzgarb Shrine, Zoro Rock, Buzz Weavile Shrine at the top with Psychic Malamar right under it. Zoropod Zoro Garb. Um, I guess I could have coupled Buzz Weavile Shrine and Buzz Garb Shrine together uh, because that is what we're going to be looking at in the actual day one meta share data. We're going to be looking at them paired together. So, Buzz Will Shrine variants of all types took up 14% of the meta. Um, if we look at my predictions, uh, I was thinking that it was going to be something like 17% Buzz Shrine, so I wasn't too far off. Um, so Buzzwool variants, baby Buzzwool Shrine variants, actually were more popular than Beaker Ray. I thought these two would be going head to head, and I was very interested to see which one came out on top in popularity. It is Buzzwool Shrine variants. Uh, Vika Ray not too far behind and very close behind that is Zorark Lycanroc. Uh, those three were the definitive three popular archetypes really. 
even though the top one is more of a collection of variants uh vika bulu after seeing not too much play for a bit came in tied at the fourth most played deck uh behind that zoropod malamar variants etc so this is the day one meta share of 812 decks uh let's go on to look at the day two share so it looks like day two buzzwell shrine zoro rock and vika ray stayed at the top so they had fairly good success rates going in from day one to day two since they stay at the top zoro rock just snuck ahead of vika ray a bit there um i have a few charts following this but i've been trying to make it as easily digestible for everyone as possible so i'm going to present it in a couple different ways um first we have this one this is showing strictly the success rate so this is we'll look at empoleon since it's a really easy number empoleon decks had a 50 percent success rate which means four people entered the tournament in day one with empoleon and two out of four of those people made it into day two giving empoleon a 50 percent success rate but looking at these numbers alone they're not as significant because at a 50 percent success rate for empoleon it looks amazing but then you find out that there were only four empoleons to enter so two of them making day two gave it a 50 percent gardevoir had this same phenomena where i think it's 33 percent so uh there were 10 there were there was about a dozen gardevoirs that entered day one and about three or four made it into day two. Um, but then as as we get farther down, uh, the rest of these decks uh, um, had a lot more uh, quantity in day one. So the percentage is a little, uh, a little more accurate and a little more, you can take it at face value. Um, but I fixed that up. So we have a couple more charts. So the Empoleon, the Gardevoir, you can uh, kind of look at those. In their correct light so in this next one i have the day one uh meta share so we see you know over a hundred buzzwell shrine variants entered and um a little more than probably 10 or so made it in so uh if we go back and look at the success rate buzzwell shrine variants had just about a 10 percent uh, success rate so that means about one in every 10 people that entered with that deck made it into day two not too bad um, of course all the decks that has zero percent success rate are not shown on uh, the original chart now if we go and look at this one this is where uh, it's the most uh, I put the most numbers into this one so it might be a little harder to understand but that's why I'm here to help you through it so We'll see uh, it goes from top to bottom, highest success rate to lowest success rate, but we also have the day one meta share, the day two meta share here to help us out. So Empoleon is the highest. It has the 50% success rate. But in the red number, we see how many entered in day one, four. How many actually made it through to day two, two. So that's what its 50% success rate is. The same for Guard of our... Um, we had three enter and one make it through. So I was a little bit off earlier in the video. There was a lot less than 10 Gardevoirs that actually entered. Um, but then we get to most of the other decks that had any showing in day two. Uh, the success rates are pretty cool to look at really. So um, we had Buzzwell GX variants, which were, uh, you know, Buzzrock, uh, Buzz my cargo buzz rock with Zygar GX 41 of those variants entered and eight made it through uh, 20% so pr Actually really really good for a deck that was kind of falling off in the community's eyes uh, Not a lot of people were hyping it up uh, you know the one prize decks have uh, Usually a pretty favorable matchup. They also have Gar Garbador uh, Vika Ray's hard for it because Vika Ray takes the early lead and then you have to fight from behind. But Buzzwool variants, I think they're really consistent. They just, you know, they do the same thing every game. They start swinging with Jet Punch and that wins you a lot of games. Uh, 
So I think this was a really important number to see that it had a 20% success rate, uh, 41 entered and eight made it through to day two. Uh, let's see if there's another interesting one to look at. We had, there were 11 Passimians, uh, <laughs> 11 Passimians entered in day one. Only one made it through to day two, but not bad for a kind of a rogue deck that uh, I know a group of friends kind of put together and played for day one, but unfortunately only one of them made to day two. Uh, Zoro Weavile, which was getting a fair amount of hype, only had one make it into day two out of 19 that entered. Um, Shining Lugia, I know that had a lot, a lot of hype. Shining Lugias were actually like selling out left and right. Uh, 42 entered and 4 made it through for a 10% success rate. So you'll see a lot of these decks actually had 10% and higher success rates, including the Empoleon and Gardevoir, uh, which are, you know, uh, a little... You don't really want to count them because there were so few of them that actually entered. Uh, Vika Ray had a 10% success rate. I think what's really important to see is all the Tier 1 decks, you know, Vika Ray, Zora Rock, Buzz Shrine, they all had... 10 10 and 13 percent success rates i don't think any of those three decks are going anywhere also psychic malamar uh which you know wasn't super hyped but i considered it around tier one maybe tier 1.5 uh 17 success rate 36 entering six making it through to day two really really good alongside of buzzwall gx having a really great success rate I had the highest success rate for any deck with more than five decks entered in day one. Um, and those are two decks from our past format that, you know, kind of fell off in popularity. But I think this tournament shows that they're still good. They're still consistent. Uh, there's still a lot of reasons to play them. Um, let's go back just for a second. So... Looking at the day one meta share, uh, the Zoro Bayonet deck, there were only a few of them in the tournament. We know the one that made it through to day two, uh, Xander uh, Pero. He got top four with it. Super interesting deck. Um, but you'll see such a large variety of decks, which we normally see in day one metas. Because uh, it's open. Anybody can enter this tournament as long as they registered. And hand it in their deck list anybody can enter so uh because it's open to the public a lot of people you know enter with fun decks or they're newer and they don't know the meta or they made a bad meta call so day one metas are usually super diverse like this but the day two meta if we look at it there's a lot of slices of this chart there's some that don't even have the names uh put on because there were so many uh i believe one of the uh one of the slices I know that is missing is ho o ki -Awe. That actually had a day two showing. But such a diverse meta. Uh, and I really love it. There's stage two decks like Metagross GX. There's Bayonet GX seeing uh, competitive play uh, for the first time in the standard format with alongside Zorark. Uh, previously, it was seen at Worlds in the Buzzwell Shrine deck. Uh, Buzzwell Shrine, even though we knew about it, we knew how good it was, it took Santa Catarina Regionals by storm. It still had the highest percentage of the Day 2 meta share uh, in Philly. So people were soft countering it. You know, they were playing replacement stadiums and they were playing weakness policy for their Zorarchs or more healing cards, but it's still such a strong and viable archetype and I think this shows that it's here to stay, at least until the next set comes out. No one knows what will happen then, but it, it is here to stay. Uh, I think Zoro Rock, Vika Ray, Buzzwell Shrine are all super, super solid variants. And I also think that Malamar, Psychic, and uh, Buzzwell GX variants are really worth noting. Uh, they've been kind of swept under the rug a bit. And even Rukan Shao, who got second place with Malamar, he said, you know, I posted this list. Oh, he played a fairly innovative list. Um, he said, he, I posted this list in a Poke Beach article like last month and just no one paid it any mind. Uh, people, I guess people thought Psychic Malamar was gone. 
you know, Buzzrock lost Max Elixir, so those two archetypes are still here, and they got people a lot of points. They had fairly high success rates. Buzzwool actually had really high success rate, um, and I think this data, you know, proves it proves that these decks are still good. If anybody was wanting proof or is here to be proved wrong on it uh buzzwell and malamar are definitely very very good still so i don't want to go on blabbering i wanted to just you know give everyone a good depiction of what happened in philly give you some extra numbers to see uh to give you some ideas to give you some evidence to some of your ideas whatever it is hopefully my video could help you get to your new deck choice or breaking the meta or whatever it is you're doing um i think i left most of these slides up for a fairly long amount of time that if anyone wants to pause the video and screenshot the slide or look at it longer show a friend i think you can um if not let me know and i'll like put up a link to the slide itself but i think you should be fine with the video make sure to check out flipsidegaming.com and use my coupon code celio all caps for 10 percent off of your next order ten dollars or more also check back there for my weekly articles i try to write around 15 to 2 1500 to 2000 words on average in my articles get a lot of information out there i have a lot to say about pokemon i play it a lot i love the game uh thank you guys make sure to subscribe if you want more content like this i'll see you next time here on celio's network